Welcome back to the Cedarburg Vetting Clinic. Today we're going to have a little uh, armchair discussion instead of a demonstration. Um, because I, I stumbled upon an article uh, a little bit ago and it, it uh, brought up a, a very interesting discussion about this, uh, what we're referring to as a puppy apocalypse <laughs> that we're seeing because uh, a lot of people has have found that this time in our uh, society has been a, a good time frame to get uh, a new dog or a new puppy, which is really great. It's fantastic. You know, a lot of people have a lot of extra time on their hands, and there's a lot of deserving dogs that need homes, a lot of deserving puppies, and uh, a lot of deserving homes. So, um, so I, I decided that uh, I was going to sit down and have this little armchair discussion about um, puppy socialization. Um, because it's it's hard right now to get out and socialize puppies and do what we need to do in order to get a well-rounded dog um, because we can't we can't socialize the way that we normally would uh, in normal time frames so the article that I stumbled upon is uh, five little known puppy training tips you'll be glad that you found um, Victoria Stillwell's website is kind of a wealth of information of articles like this, which is kind of cool. If you don't know who Victoria Stillwell is, she's a, a trainer that found fame because of her TV show on Animal Planet, It's Me or the Dog. It's kind of a cute little show. So, um, anyway, this article kind of talks about a couple different things about puppy socialization and different things that you have to kind of sit back and think about, okay? So, first important thing is, is that you, you should really teach your puppy that you, they don't always get to meet everybody that they see, uh, puppy or dog, on a walk, okay? Um, a lot of impulse control issues that we see in puppies are because of, you know, this issue, leash reactivity kind of things. So, it's always easier to train a dog what to do than what not to do. So my philosophy in life is nothing is free we teach our children to say please so the easiest way to get a dog to say please is by sitting so you ask your dog to say please by sitting and then they get to do what they would like to do potentially if you want them to be able to do that okay uh on that same kind of uh pro thought process beginning impulse control exercises early is very important as well okay so drop it leave it a good recall can save lives, okay? Number three is over-socialization can be just as problematic as under-socialization. There's a big difference between flooding and socialization. There's Puppies go through these fear stages that if you, if you shove them into things that they, they're afraid of, it can be, have the opposite effect than what we want, okay? So you have to be very careful to not shove them into things that they're terrified or scared or apprehensive of. Um, number four is other dogs can be great teachers, but they can also be bad influences. So you just have to be very careful with social interaction with that, okay? Number five, very good point. Everyone has an opinion, but trust the advice of a qualified professional. There's, there's a lot of people on the internet, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of different things that you can find on the internet to support one view or another, but definitely finding the opinion of a qualified professional is probably the, the choice that you would want to follow, okay? So puppy socialization is something that isn't just dogs and people, it's also different things. So obviously right now, people are wearing masks, so we want to expose dogs to people wearing masks, masks being around, other things, um, funny hats, um, different textures of floors, and potentially, you know, just other things that you might find in day-to-day -day life. Skateboards, bikes, um, different people outside, that sort of thing, okay? And um, in the house, you know, what we're trying to talk about too is, you know, 
preventing certain behaviors from happening as well with puppy socialization. So as a whole, the veterinary community is a little concerned that we might see some puppies with separation anxiety once everybody kind of gets back to work potentially, okay? So setting up a puppy zone in your house with interactive toys, chews, and making sure we have them spend time alone in the crate and just making sure that we're keeping and maintaining boundaries, okay? Um, the other thing is, is that there are trainers that are working right now. Some of them may be doing it virtual. Some of them are doing it in person. So please don't forget that that is happening and that's going on. You know, it's, these people need to work too. So. <laughs> um, I met a very wonderful uh, veterinarian at the beginning of the year at Pet Expo. Her name is Dr. Lori Rockwell. She's in the process of getting her uh, behavior residency actually. So she said something that stuck with me. It's kind of funny that we don't think about it. She said that we don't praise our dogs enough. It's, if you think about it, that's true. You know, like they do something wrong and we're like, ah, oh, you're not supposed to do that. But when they do something right, like walking nicely on a walk or sitting quietly when we answer the door, we have to praise them for that. They did that correctly. So we have to, we have to acknowledge that. Yes, acknowledge the bad behavior and correct it, but acknowledge the good behavior too because that's how we reinforce that behavior too. Okay, so remember, your dog is an individual, and it will and the process is never going to look like anybody else's. Okay, so keep doing what you're doing, love the dog in front of you, and have a wonderful day. If you have any questions or concerns, please let us know.